Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Latanya D. Williams, and I am here today to deliver to you a powerful word from the Lord. Um, I'm really excited about this word. Spent a lot of time in this word in prayer and seeking God, and he gave me a great word for us today. So I just want to thank you for joining me. Good evening, Monica BF. Thank you for joining me, always supporting me. Celia, greetings to you, my sister. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. Thanks to all of you who are to come and to join me as we engage today in the word of God and in worship. As I've stated, this is a very, 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 very powerful word from the Lord, very in time, very in season, very relevant, very necessary. And so I'm, so, I'm just so grateful to God for giving me this word. And so we are going to go ahead and get into prayer, start this message with prayer and end it with prayer. But in between those times, we're going to be expounding on the word of God. And so I don't want to delay this message any further. So we're going to go ahead and begin with prayer. Father, we just thank you today, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, oh God, for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness and the new mercies that you make available to us each and every day, oh God. Father, we thank you today, today for allowing us to come together, to gather together in this place. We are here, oh God, for you. We are here for your word, oh God. Father, today, speak to us, oh God. Speak to our hearts in a powerful way. Father, I pray that you will open up the minds and hearts of the people that they may be able to receive and comprehend, oh God, this word that you're going to deliver to us on today, oh God. Father, open up our hearts that it will be fruitful, oh God, and fertile grounds where your word may be planted and may where it may grow and bear much fruit, oh God. Father, I just cast down every thought, every imagination, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in this hour. Father, anything that's a hindrance or a distraction, oh God, I cast it down in the name of Jesus. God, your word is going to come forth in power. It's going to come forth in clarity. We thank you for the revelation and the confirmation, the healing and the deliverance, oh God. We thank you for salvation even that's going to come forth because of your word, oh God. Father, I pray now, God, that as I decrease, that you may e increase even the more, oh God, that it will be not of me and all of you, O oh God, speak through my lips of clay. Speak your oracles, O oh God, that you alone may be glorified. Father, it's never about me, but it's always about you, O oh God. And so, Father, I thank you in advance for what the Holy Spirit is going to do for us. I thank you in advance, O oh God, for the manifestation and revelation that's going to come forth. I thank you, O oh God, that the word that comes forth today, that it will not return back to you, void, God, but that it's going to accomplish every single thing that you send your word forth to do. And so, Father, we praise you and we rejoice, O oh God, over this word. And we thank you, O oh God, for being mindful of us. And we thank you for all that you're going to accomplish today through your word, Father. We praise your holy name. We lift you up and we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that you desire and you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. We are going to be coming today from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And many of you have already seen the topic of my message. I hope you've had time to kind of think about it and um, prepare your hearts and mind for this word, rules of engagement. Um, I had to do a lot of praying, a lot of studying, a lot of preparation to bring forth this word. But God is true to his word. I cannot do it without God. I'm just a vessel of God. I'm just an instrument of, of God's righteousness. And I'm just here to do what God has called me to do. And so I'm excited about this word because this word is for each and every one of us that are here and those who are coming here and those who will hear this word moving forward. And so again, we're going to be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now, I tried to take some scriptures out. It's a pretty lengthy chapter. I'm not going to read all of it. But then as I was trying to take some of the scriptures out, for the sake of time, the Lord began to minister to me and told me not to sell him short. <laughs> so I'm not going to sell God short. I'm not going to put God in a box. I'm going to do just what God told me to do here today. I'm going to speak what God has told me to speak here today. And so I'm going to read these scriptures because I want to paint a picture for you. And I want to make sure that you truly understand these rules. You understand these rules of engagement because you are going to need them. And some of you are in need of these rules in this world right here, right now. And so I'm not going to sell God short. I'm not going to cut you short. I'm going to read this word until I finish up the scriptures that God has told me to share with you today. So let us go 
to 1 Samuel chapter 17. It says, now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle. Look at that. They gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Sokol, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Sokol and Azekah and Ephraim's Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in the battle's array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and the Israel and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and he spanned. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. Wow, that was a very heavy armor. And a shield barrier went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, look at this bully. I put that part in, by the way. Goliath was a bully. Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. You will engage in warfare. You will engage in warfare at some time or season upon in your life. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and who had eight sons. And the man was old, advanced in years in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to battle. The names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to Abibadab, and the third, Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and in turn returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself for 40 days, morning and evening. Ooh, that sounds just like the enemy. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they and, they, and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper and took the things that the things that went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. But Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in the battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the, the supply keeper, ran to the army of Cain and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was, a, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. Woo, I like that. <laughs> and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the man who kills Goliath, pay attention to this, who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches will give him his daughter and give his father house exemption, exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who stood by saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Phil this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Woo! That he should defy the armies of the living God. And the people answered him in this manner saying, So shall it be done for this man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man, and Eliab, anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here 
And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing. And these people answered him, David, as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul. Now we get into the meat of the message. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. See, that's what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to defile the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk. For he had not tested them. Oh, my God. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these. I have not tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag and a pouch, which he had. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And the man who bore the shield were before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he, he was disdained for he, for he was only a youth, rudy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Woo, and listen at David. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword, with the spear, with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp to the Philistines of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you into my hands. And so it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried. Woo, my God. See, David didn't run away from the battle. He hurried to meet Goliath. The Bible says he hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone, the stone sank into the forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Oh, my God. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Today, we're going to talk about rules of engagement. Today, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. Because whether you're aware of it or not, you are in a battle. And you are in a fight for your life. There's a war and a battle happening all around us. And we must be, must be cognizant of this spiritual battle, this invisible battle, this unseen battle, these forces that we are fighting against each and every day. There are some rules of engagements that we must abide by in order for us to fight the battle and win. I don't know about you, but when I fight, I fight to win because the victory is ours. And so we're going to talk about the rules of engagement when we are in battle. Some of you may have seen the definition that I put down for rules of engagement. But I have a shorter version. Rules of engagement are derivatives, okay? They are directives. They are decrees. They are instructions. They are mandates issued by commanders that control the use of military force. Ha! Huh? 
Again, they are um, directives, decrees, instructions, mandates issued by commanders that control the use of military force. Now, you all know that the commander of chief and the army of God is God himself. He is our commander in chief, our derivatives, our instructions, our mandates, our decrees, our instructions in battle and in life. They come from the Lord. And so we have rules of engagement that we must follow when we engage in battle. Just as with military forces, believers in spiritual battle, we must follow these rules of engagement if we are to fight and win. The word of God is our derivative. The word of God is our mandate. The word of God give us the rules that we need when we are engaging in battle. Too many believers are fighting losing battles. Too many believers are fighting and they're losing. Too many believers are giving up in battle. This should not be so. We were created to win. Hear what I'm saying to you? Oh my God. We were created to win. God created us to be vigilant and victorious in battles. No believer on this earth shall be losing the battle because God has already given us the victory through Christ Jesus. We were created to win. We were created to be vigilant and victorious in battle. We were predestined and equipped to win every spiritual battle that we engage in the army of God. This is his word and this is his will. So then why are so many believers losing the battle? Why are so many believers losing to the enemy? It's because they're not engaging the rules that God has given us when we are in a battle. And so we're going to talk about these rules. This is very important. Take some notes. Go back and listen to this video, this recording, because you are going to need this information. Some of you are in a fight for your life right now. Some of you are fighting for your marriage. Some of you are fighting for your children. Some of you are fighting for your sanity. Some of you are fighting for your family. Some of you are fighting for your health. You need to know these rules of engagement. You must understand these rules so that you will know not only how to prepare for the battle, but how to fight in that battle and how to fight to win. If I ever fight, my aim is to win. I don't fight to lose. I fight to win. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And so we're going to talk about these rules of engagement that God gave me to share with you. This is the first rule that God gave me. And I myself at times have not even acknowledged this. But the first thing we must know and understand that the battles we fight are not physical battles. They are not worldly battles. They are spiritual battles. We must understand and we must know that we are fighting a spiritual battle. We're not fighting a physical battle. We're not fighting a, world, a worldly battle. We are fighting a spiritual battle. We must know this and understand this in order to prepare and engage properly in the battles, the fight for our life. Real, hear me carefully. You are fighting for your life. This is very serious. This is the battle that you fight for your life. We are not fighting a worldly battle. It says in Ephesians 6 and 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with the physical opponents, but rulers, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly and high places. We must understand you are not wrestling against flesh and blood. That co-worker that's annoying you every day for no reason, that's bothering you, the forces that you're dealing with in your house, you think you're fighting a person, but you're really fighting a spirit. Listen, the enemy needs a body. He needs, he'll use anybody. He doesn't care how young or old the body is. He will use, he needs a body and he will use anybody to carry out his evil work. So you may think that you're fighting with a human or a person. Yes, that person is operating out of the flesh, but they're also being used by a demonic force to aggravate, to annoy, to bring destruction. You must realize that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You are wrestling against the spirit. There's a spiritual battle going on and you must be equipped and prepared for the battle if you want the victory that God has promised to you and to me. So we first must we must first know and understand that the battle that we fight a spiritual every battle that the believer fight is a spiritual battle. Hallelujah. Demons you fight it says principalities I mean demons. Demons are evil angels. These are angels that were once in heaven that rebelled against God along with Satan and got thrown out. So you're dealing with a spiritual being, but it's an evil being. And so when you're dealing with demons, you are dealing with evil angels who sinned and lost the privilege and the, the, the privilege of serving God. 
They lost that privilege when they were thrown from heaven. So you are dealing not with flesh and blood, but you are dealing with the demonic force. You are dealing with the spirit and you better recognize that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So that's the first thing that you must understand. Spiritual warfare is a de it's demonic forces, it's a demonic activities, it's demonic attacks, it's works of Satan and activities of Satan and his cohorts of demons to hinder believers, to stop the progress and growth of the church, to stop the spreading of the gospel. That's the mission of these demonic forces that we are fighting against each and every day. And whether you recognize it or not, you are in a battle and you better make sure that you be mindful of this battle, that you be aware of this battle, that you be prepared and equipped for the battle, that you follow the rules of engagement that God has given us through his word so that when you fight, you will win. God has given us the victory through Christ Jesus, but you must fight the battle the way that God tells you to fight it if you want to win and to maintain abiding victory in every battle that you fight. And so these, this spiritual warfare, these demonic forces want to hinder your prayer life. They want to hinder your worship. They want to hinder your praise. They want to deter you from the faith, deter you from the truth, deter you from living holy, deter you from the scripture. And they want to take away the authority that God has given you over them. It is a fight between good and evil. It is a fight between light and darkness. It is a fight between spirit and flesh. Some of us are struggling and battling right now in our flesh, but it is a spiritual battle. It's an invisible, unseen battle that's happening all around us. And that's why many of us are missing it because we don't have king's discernment. We don't have insight, spiritual insight. In order to see these forces, you must look through the eyes of God. You must have the spirit of discernment. You must have spiritual insight. And you must understand. You must be sober. You must be alert because your enemy, the devil, is, is, is going around, prowling around like a lion, seeking whom he can devour. These spirits are real, demonic Forces are real and they are working through people to get to you and to you and to you and to me. But we have authority over the enemy. And so we must look through, look through the eyes of God to see these spirits that are lurking and working in high places, in high places. Be sober, it says in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be well balanced and well disciplined. Be alert, be cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Look like a roaring lion, right? Pretending. Fiercely hungry, seeking somebody to devour. Woo, the devil wants to devour you. He wants to destroy you. He is after your soul. Not your, not your, not your joy and not your, your soul. He's after your soul. He's trying to get as many souls as he can. So he can keep them from going to heaven. The devil is after your soul. That's the, his primary aim is your soul. So we must pay attention to the battles that are taking place in the unseen spiritual realm that surrounds us. We cannot afford to ignore our, our, our role in this battle that we have that we have eternal consequences. As Christians, it is vital that we engage in spiritual battles because when we do, the more we do, the more we overcome these evil forces in this fallen world by God's power working through us. Listen, some of you right now are on the front line and you will not fight. You're on the front line. Your life is on the line, but you will not fight. Yes, the battle belongs to God, but God is going to work through you to fight that battle. It's time for you to start fighting back. The enemy is devouring you. The enemy is destroying you. The enemy is disturbing you. You got to fight. After today, you're going to have these rules of engagement. If you apply them to your life, you will get to fight stronger than you ever fought before, better than you ever fought before, and your victory will increase in the Lord because you're following his word. You're following his decrees. You're following his mandates and his instructions regarding how to engage in battle. So the first thing we must realize and understand that the battles that we fight are spiritual battles. Okay. They are not physical battles. They are not worldly battles. They are spiritual battles. Number two, we must prepare for the battle. We must prepare for the fight. Some of us are trying to fight. We haven't prepared for the fight. We don't know how to fight. Floyd Mayweather don't just jump in the ring. He, he practiced and he trained for years and years and years before he got into the ring. Some of us are getting into the ring and we don't even know how to fight. My God. We don't even know how to fight. So the second thing we must do is prepare for battle. It says in Psalms 14 and 1, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, and my great strength who trains my hands woo, for war and my fingers for battle. 
God will teach you how to fight. He will prepare and equip you for the battle. You are a warrior in training, ongoing training. We never stop learning how to fight. Thank you, Father. It is an ongoing training for each and every battle, spiritual battle that we will face in our lives. It is God who gives us the protection and preparation for battle. My God, God will teach us how to fight. We must prepare for battle. God trains our mind. He trains our spirit. And he teaches us how to fight. Trials, tribulations, adversity, challenges, struggles. These are some of the rigorous training courses we go through to learn how to fight. My God, some of the things you're going through right now, God said, I'm teaching you how to fight. I'm preparing you for the battle that lays ahead, the battle that stands before you. But you got to go through the training. You got to go through the trials. You got to go through the season of testing. You got to go through the challenges. You got to go through the adversity. You got to keep going because this is how you, I'm going to teach your hands how to war. The more Floyd May Mayweather had fights in the ring, the better of a fighter he became. So the more you fight, the better of a fighter you are going to become. But you must go through the training that God takes you through so that he can not only equip you and prepare you, but he can teach you how to fight. It says he trains our hands for war and our fingers for battle. God himself will teach you how to fight. There's no better coach. There's no better teacher than God himself who would teach our hands to war and our fingers for battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God teaches us how to fight by the demonstration of his own word, the word of God. His word alone will teach you how to fight. It says in James 1 and 2, consider it nothing but joy, brothers and sisters. Whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace and letting endurance have its perfect results and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. It builds up your faith because you need faith to fight. It says fight the good fight of faith. You need faith in God to fight. And so the more you go through things, the greater of a warrior, Woo, my God, you become, baby. You become the undisputed champion of the world when it comes to the enemy because when you go through the trials, you go through the time of testing, you go through the tribulation, you go through adversity, you go through the challenges, you go through the struggles. God is preparing you and making you out to be a greater and stronger and a mighty warrior in the army of God. Many of us right now are weak because we don't want to go through anything. We don't know how to fight. We haven't allowed God to teach our hands how to fight and our fingers for battle because we don't want to go through the training. Your light affliction is but for a moment, but the glory of God in your life is for all eternity. What you're going through is temporary, but the glory of God is for all eternity. God will teach you how to fight if you let him. Thank you, God. God teaches us and prepares us to fight through humbling experience. Look at David. It says in verse 33, Saul replied, you are not able to go against this Philistine and fight him for you are only a young man and he's been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Look at that. We know David went from shepherd to king. He was a warrior in training as a child. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it and rescued the sheep from his mouth. And when it turned on me, I seized it by his hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the army of the living God. So David said, Goliath may have gone through some physical training. Woo, my God. But I'm going to do some spiritual training And Goliath is no match for me The devil is no match for you When you go through spiritual training When you allow God to teach your hands to war And your fingers for battle The devil and his cohorts They are no match for you Thank you God Oh my God I don't care how long the devil has existed they, so I don't care about Goliath going through physical training I have spiritual training And spiritual training is much more profitable It's much more powerful And Goliath is no match for me because God has taught me how to fight. He has taught my hands how to war. He has taught my fingers how to battle. So tell Goliath to bring it on. I'm ready because I'm prepared and I'm equipped for battle. Hallelujah. You must be prepared for battle. Thank you, God. God trains us spiritually for battle because we are fighting a spiritual battle. This thing is not worldly. It is not physical, but it is spiritual. It says in 1 Timothy 4 and 8, but physical training is of some value, 
But godliness, spiritual training, is of value in everything. Woo, my God, let me tell you. And in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and the life to come. It's a spiritual, a physical training is okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing like spiritual training, baby. Spiritual training prepares you for every single battle you will ever fight in the spiritual realm. And you will not lose if you follow the rules of engagement that God himself has given us for battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the second thing. You must prepare for battle. Number three, I love this. Hear me very carefully. Number three, you must know your enemy. Our enemy is Satan. And sometimes I get annoyed when I hear people say the devil is busy. The devil is a liar. That's all you know about the devil. That's it. You don't know your enemy well enough. Some of us are losing right now because all we know about the devil is he busy and he's a liar. You don't hear anything else. Who cares if he's busy? Everybody's busy these days. Some of us busy doing nothing. That's nothing powerful. You got to know this, the tricks of the enemy. You got to know the wiles of the devil. You got to know how he operates. You got to know how he functions. You got to know his activities. You got to know his character. You got to know his nature. You have to know your enemy. My husband and daughter and I went to see Maverick, Top Gun, whichever one is called. And I noticed that before they engaged the enemy, they, before they went through training, and then they went and they scoped out the enemy's camp and their territory so they would know what they were going to go against when they made their attack. Joshua and Caleb and the Israelites went over 40 days to check out the land before they, they decided, before they decided to overtake it under the command of God. So we must know our enemy. You must know the enemy that you're coming against. It's time out for saying the devil is a liar. It's time out for saying that he's busy. We know all of that. But he's much more, he's much more devious than that though. That's, that's easy, uh, busy. That's nothing. Oh, know your enemy. Saul replied in verse 33, you are not able to go against this Philistine and fight him for you are a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. That's all David needed. Look at that. He knew his enemy. He knew that Goliath had been a warrior from his youth. He knew his enemy. The devil is not just busy. He's a liar. He's a murderer. He's a deceiver. He's a master manipulator. He's a tempter. He is a betrayer. He is sinful. He is arrogant. He's evil. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. He's a priest, peace breaker. He's an adversary amongst many other evil things. He's not just busy and he's not just a liar. You must know your enemy. Thank you, God. Woo, my God. <laughs> Yes, Pastor Drew would say, you must know what that thing is up to. You got to know the way he operates. You got to know the devil is intelligent. Don't you get it twisted. He's a master manipulator. He was once an angel himself with God. So he knows how the game goes. Know your enemy. John 84 says, you are of your father, the devil. And it is your will to practice the desires which are characteristics of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning. It does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Everything the devil says is a lie. Don't believe anything that he says. When he lies, he speaks what is natural for him. Oh, my God. For he is a liar and the father of lies. He's a tempter, it says in Matthew 4 and 3. Then the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones be turned into bread. He's a tempter. See, I don't hear people talking like that. We just say he's busy. He's a liar. Look at He's a murderer, people. He is a tempter. He is a betrayer. It says in John 13 and 2, it was during supper when the devil had already put the thought of betraying Jesus, Jesus into the heart of Judah Iscariot. If they lead you into a sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness, he is a, an opportunist. Woo, it says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be alert and cautious at all times for that enemy of yours. He's your enemy. He's your opponent. He's your adversary, the enemy of yours. The devil is not your friend. He is your enemy. He prowls around like a lion. He's a pretender seeking someone to devour. You better know your enemy. You better know. Let's stop saying he's busy because, he, listen, that may be true, could be false. I don't care. We, I, he's no more busy than me or you. Hear what I'm saying to you? But let's really know our enemy, the devil. It says in John 10 and 10 that the thief comes only and to steal, kill, and destroy. Look at that. 
Jesus says, but I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Know your enemy. But most importantly, know this. Know this. He's powerless. <laughs> See, that's something we need to start talking about too. He's powerless. We have power and authority and victory over the enemy. Don't you know that? Know that he is powerless. Satan is not God. Satan is not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. He's not omnipresent. He can be in everywhere at all times. Only God can. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know all things. God knows all things. That's his issue. He wants to take the place of God in heaven. And that's why he got thrown out of heaven. Satan is not God. Let's not make him equal to God. Say, oh, the devil did this. Oh, the devil did that. The Satan has no power, no authority, no victory over you. He is a defeated foe. Satan is not God. He can never stand in the place of God. He does not have the authority nor the dominion of God. Satan is even under the rules of God. Satan, can, when in the story of Job, he had to get permission from God to even deal with Job. There's only so far that God is going to let Satan go in the life of a believer. Believe that. So he may be walking around prowling like a lion, but that lion is on a leash. There's only so far that God is going to let that lion go. He's going to rear him on, he's going to rear him back in. Listen, you have authority, you have power, and you have victory over the enemy. It says in my one of my favorite scriptures, Luke 10 and 19, it says, listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess. This is God talking. This is Jesus saying this. I've given you authority that you now possess. To tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing will in any way harm you. Know your enemy if you want to fight the battle and win. Hallelujah. Number four, put on your armor. Every last piece of your armor armor you can't leave no parts at home you can't leave none of it in your car you can't leave none of it in your closet you must put on the armor of god if you're going to fight and win we are fighting a spiritual battle and we must engage with spiritual weapons listen here's the issue we got too many believers trying to fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons and that's why you're losing you want to render evil for evil you want to go back and forth those are carnal weapons you better know how to fight if you're going to fight this battle and win put on the whole armor of god you need your weapons and you need your armor if you're going to fight and win this battle. I will say this again. You cannot fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons and expect to win. Many of us are losing because we're trying to fight this spiritual battle with carnal weapons. And that's why we are losing. It says in 2 Corinthians 10, for we, though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, listen to this, this is powerful. We are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare woo, are not physical weapons, weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of strongholds. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that set itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive and every purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. You must use the right weapons. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Prayer is mighty through God. Fasting is mighty through God. Praise is mighty through God. Worship is mighty through God. The word of God is mighty through God. These are your weapons, and you must use the right weapons in this battle, in this warfare, if you want to continue to walk in abiding victory through Christ Jesus. The armor of God. It says... One of my other favorite scriptures, hallelujah, in Ephesians. Ephesians, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Put on the whole full armor of God. Woo, my God. For his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully and victoriously Stand up against all the schemes and strategies of the deceits and deceits of the devil. You got to know your enemy. Baby, you ain't wrestling against flesh and blood. That's a spirit. 
that you're dealing with. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending on with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, supernatural places. Hear that? Therefore, put on the complete arm of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. People, we are living in some evil days. People are killing children in cars. People are shooting each other over, over condiments. We got so much going on. Homes are being destroyed. Listen to me. We are now living in that time. You better make sure that you have on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand in these last and evil days of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, Im immovable and victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth around your waist, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having strapped your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the shield of faith, my God, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, I'm saying specific requests at all times, on every occasion and in every season, pray in the spirit. Hear me, Woo, my God. With this in view, stay alert. And with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. Are you strapped? Are you armed and dangerous? See, the enemy needs to know that. Are you strapped? Everybody wants to have a gun and, and have these things, but are you strapped with the armor of God? That's the most powerful gear you can ever put on. The most protective gear that you can ever wear. It says put on the full armor of God if you want to stand against the wiles of the devil. You can't decide what piece you're going to wear on Friday and which piece you're going to put on on Saturday. Every day, you need to make sure that you have on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes, the wiles, the strategies, and the lies and the deceit of the enemy. We are in a warfare, and only those who follow God's rules of engagement are going to fight it, and they're going to win it. Because whether you want to fight or not, that's not going to stop these spirits. It's time for us to get up. And begin to fight back. Some of us are on the front line right now. The enemies is just beating us down because we won't fight back. It's time for you to stand up and put on your armor and follow these rules of engagement that God has given us. And by faith, go up to the battle like a soldier of God and know that God has already given you the victory. But you must engage the battle. If you want to save your marriage, you must engage the battle. If you want your prodigal children to return back home, you must engage in the battle. If you want things to be better, on your job. You must engage in the battle. It's time to fight. We are in a fight for our lives. We can't afford to be on the sideline. We can't afford, cannot afford to be dormant. We must engage in battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Number five, know who is the commander of chief. Who is our commander in chief? It is God himself. He's the supreme command of his army. Hallelujah. The battle belongs to God. Don't be afraid of fighting it. Woo, my God. See, a lot of times we say, I'm just going to, the battle belongs to God. You want to think, yo, you got to fight in the battle. David had to fight in the battle. Moses, Joshua, all these guys, they had to fight in the battle. So you can't just sit there. Yes, the battle belongs to God, but you have to engage in that battle because he's going to fight it through you. He's going to fight it with you. He's going to fight it for you, but you have a role in the battle. It's time for you to strap up your boots and it's time for you to put on your armor and it's time for you to get ready to fight the fight of your life. Listen, the enemy is on a loose. He's on a rampage. He's, he's coming back more vicious. You have to be ready to fight the battle. Know who is the commander in chief. It is God himself. The battle belongs to God. The victory belongs to us because God has given us the victory already through Christ Jesus. It says in Deuteronomy 20 and 4, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you. Look at that. That means that you got to fight. Listen, let me, re let me read this again. For those who say, well, the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm just going to not do anything. Let me read this again. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against the enemies to give you the victory. Listen to that. You must engage in battle. You don't have to be afraid to engage because God is going to fight for you. He's going to fight with you. He's going to fight through you. You are surrounded by a whole host of angels. You have an invisible army that's surrounding you too. And they're always fighting on your behalf. 
It says in Psalms 24 and 8, who is the king of glory? Woo, my God. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. God has never lost the fight. He's the great contender. He is the king of the world. Woo, my God. God has never lost a fight. And when you're with God, you're on a winning team. And guess what? You will never lose a battle. You will never lose the fight either because who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. It says in 2 Chronicles, I love this, 20 and 15. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. This is a prophetic word. Receive this word in the name of the Lord. This is prophetic. This is a prophetic word for you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God. Don't be afraid to engage. Don't be afraid to fight the enemy back. Don't be afraid to fight for your family. Don't be afraid to fight for your marriage. Don't be afraid to fight for your children. Don't be afraid to fight for your sanity. Don't be afraid to fight for your peace. For the Lord is with you. And the battle belongs to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Know that God will give you the victory in every single battle that you fight. He will fight for you. He will fight through you. He will fight with you. You will never fight alone. Oh, my God. Listen, you got a whole army. You can't even count the number of soldiers in the army of God. The number of angels who are around you, surrounding you right now, fighting for you. Even as we, I preach this word. Listen, I had to fight some forces just to get this word through today. But I kept on fighting because I knew I had the victory. So I put on my boots. I put on my armor of God. And I said, bring it on, enemy. You can't stop me. I'm coming forth. And I'm going to bring forth the word of God. I know that the victory is mine. Come on now. I know the victory. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here preaching the word of God with power and authority because God sent me here. And I was not going to allow no enemy to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. So I began to fight back. I began to go to the front line. And I began to make sure that I was fully geared and I was ready. The enemy had no place with me. And I'm here because I stood up and I fought, I engaged the battle and I won. Woo, my God. Know that God will give you the victory in every battle that you fight. Hallelujah. I love this. David said to the Philistine, you come against me in verse 45 with sword and spear and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered there will know that there is, is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord and he will give you into my hands. God will give you the victory. The enemy has no way with you. As the Philistine moved closer to attack David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Get up and fight back. David did not run from Goliath. David ran to Goliath. Oh, my God. He's I'm coming to you because I know the battle belongs to God. And I know the victory belongs to David. Reaching out into his bag, he took out his stones. And he slung it. He took out his armor. He had his, his, his weapons. He was ready for the Philistine. He struck him in the head. The stone sunk in Goliath's head. He fell down to the ground. David triumph over the, over the Philistine. You're going to triumph over your enemies. You're going to triumph over the, the chaos in your home. You're going to triumph over the disturbances that the enemy is trying to put in your marriage. But you got to engage in battle and you got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight because the victory is yours. But the battle is God's. Hallelujah. David ran and stood over Goliath. He took Goliath's sword and drew it from his sheath. And after he killed him, he cut off his head. With his own sword. <laughs> I like that. David cut off Goliath's head with his own sword. That's what you have to do with the enemy. He's get his same words he tried to use against you and cut his head off with them. Hallelujah. And after he killed him, he cut off, he cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Listen, when they when 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 the little demons see you putting a whipping on the devil, they're gonna take off and run. Just like the little armies of the Philistines did. Don't run from the enemy. The Bible says resist him, not run from him. It says resist him, not run from him. You must engage in battle. Number six, you must have a victory mindset. I'm almost done now. You must have a victory mindset and attitude of a warrior and a winner. David didn't care. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he defiles the army of the living God? 
He said, bring them on. I'll fight them. Everybody is scared, but I will fight them because I know that the battle belongs to God. I know that God is going to deliver me from this hand as this uncircumcised Philistine. Come on now. Listen to that. You must have a victory mindset and you must have an attitude of a warrior and a winner. Oh, my God. When the enemy wage war, you declare victory through the word of God and have faith and not fear. When the enemy wage war, when he wage war, you declare victory. You got to have a victory mindset. So you know, I know the victory is already mine. Let me go ahead and beat down the devil and get this over with because I know the victory is already mine. Woo, I'm a winner and I'm a warrior of God. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. So you, you got to go in. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Hallelujah. And then all these things in Romans 8 and 37, I'm more than a cockroach. That's a, that's a winning attitude. That's a victory mindset. Those are words of a warrior. My God. It says one of my favorite, 1 John 4 and 4, little children. You are of God and you belong to him. You have already overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's talking about the devil. Greater is he that is in you who is in you than he who is in the world. You got to have a victorious mindset. You got to have a victory mindset. And you got to have the attitude of a warrior and a winner. David focused on the victory. He didn't focus on the battle. Come on. See, some of us focus on the battle. That belongs to God. Focus on the victory because that belongs to you. Because God is going to give it to you over every enemy that you come against. David focused on the promise and not the process. Some of us are worried about the process. He focused on the promise. And that's clear in verse 25. It says, when the, now the Israelite had been saying, do you see this man keeps coming out? This man keeps coming out. He comes out to divide Israel. The king will give wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt him and his, from, his family from taxing in Israel. That's all David needed to hear. David said, what, what would the person get again who defeats this uncircumcised Philistine? David focused on the promise, not the process. David focused on the victory and not the battle. You must have the mindset of a winner and you must have an attitude of a warrior. You must have a victorious mindset. Victory must be in your mind. It must, you must know that victory is your resolve. Hallelujah. It says in Ephesians 1 and 3, blessing and worthy of praise. Be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms in Christ. Focus on those blessings. Focus on those victories. Focus on the blessings because at the end of every battle, hallelujah, there's victory. At the end of every battle, there's liberty. At the end of every battle, there are blessings. There are breakthroughs. There are testimonies. There are promises. There's a greater level of anointing. Listen, there's greater strength. You're going to go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. Behind and on the, at the end of every battle are these great things. Focus on the victory and focus on your past victories. I love when David says, said that the same God who delivered me from the lion and the bear will be the same God that delivered me from the hands of this uncircumcised Philistines. Sometimes you got to focus on your past. God, I had, I had to fight last week. I had to fight a spirit last week, God, but you gave me the victory. You're going to do it to me again this week. You're going to do it to me the week after that. You got to focus on those past victories because they'll give you strength. They'll give you courage. They'll give you confidence. They'll give you hope. And they will give you peace. Hallelujah. And finally, the last rules, rule of engagement. Pray, seek, and inquire of the Lord before every battle. Because not every battle is for you to fight. Mm -mm. Be sure that you pray, that you seek, and that you inquire of the Lord before you engage any battle. This is what David did faithfully. He did it before every battle as king. And there's several scriptures in the Bible that talks about David inquired of the Lord before he went to battle. Some of you just going wild, just fighting. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Battles that are not even yours. Battles that God don't even want you to fight. And yet, guess why you're losing? Make sure that you seek the Lord. Because not every battle is worth the fight. And not every battle is your fight. So just make sure that you seek the Lord before you engage in any battle. There's a, time, there's a time and season for peace, there's a time for peace, and there's a time for war. But in order to know the difference, you got to pray and seek the Lord and inquire of God, God, should I engage in this fight? 
God, is this my fight? Because not every fight is worth fighting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear that. Not every fight is worth fighting. You must make sure that you seek the Lord. It says in Exodus 14 and 14, the Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. While you only need to hold your peace. There have been times God said, don't open your mouth. Don't say a word. This is not your fight. I got this. Just be, be confident, be calm, and be still. And I'm going to fight this one for you. You don't need to participate. You don't even need to engage. I'm going to do this for you. So there'll be times when God says, I want you to sit here and be quiet, be calm, and be confident that I got this. And then there'll be times God will tell you to rise up and let's go. Pull up, go get your, go pull your bag of weapons like David did his little bag of stones. And it's time to start throwing. It's time to throw down. But there'll be times when God says, I want you to sit here and be still and just know that I am God. But you must make sure that you seek the Lord, that you pray and you inquire the Lord before you engage in any spiritual battle. I don't care how big you think it is or how small you think it is. Make sure that you inquire of the Lord. It says in 2 Chronicles uh, 20 and 17, you need not fight this battle. Take your positions. Stand and witness the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. God told them, no fight today, wait till tomorrow, and then go out. See, see how they, they went to the Lord and God spoke to them? Some of you right now, God is saying, it's not time for you to fight yet. You don't need to fight that battle just yet. Just hold on. I will, rele I will let you know when I release you to the battlefield. But in the meantime, take your position. Be prepared and be ready. Because when I release you, you're going to fight. And you're going to fight and you're going to win. Because the battle is mine and the victory is yours. Thank you, Father. In my last scripture, Proverbs 21 and 31, if we pray and obey, listen to this very carefully. If we pray and obey in every battle, we will triumph at every turn. Victory rests with the Lord. He will give us that victory. If we obey, pray and obey God, we will never lose a battle. It says in Proverbs 21 and 31, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance and victory belong to God, hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, oh God. Hallelujah, thank you, God. We thank you for the power that we now possess to tread over scorpions and serpents. We thank you for the authority that you have given us in the name of Jesus over every work, over every activity, over every attack, over every scheme, over every lie of Satan's. You said no harm will come our way, O oh God. Father, continue to teach us how to exercise our authority. Continue to teach, equip, and prepare us for battle. Continue to teach our hands how to war and our fingers for battle, O oh God. Father, help us to apply your word, your rules of engagements, your decrees, your mandates, your instructions, O oh God, and your declarations concerning spiritual warfare to our lives, O oh God. Father, we thank you that we have the, Christ, the victory through Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are strong and mighty in battle. Father, we thank you that the battle belongs to you and that victory is ours, oh God, because of you. Father, help us to continue to seek you, oh God, to inquire of you and to pray to you regarding every single matter and every battle that we face in this life. Father, we thank you, oh God, that no demonic force, no weapon formed against us will ever prosper, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are surrounded by a whole host of angels, oh God, an invisible army of the Lord that fights for us each and every day. Father, we pray right now, ask that you would give us greater discernment, oh God, greater insight that we may be able to see, oh God, the unseen. Woo, we may be able to see the invisible forces, oh God, that are surrounding us, that's trying to attack our families, that's trying to attack our children. That's trying to attack our homes, our bodies, oh God. Our marriages, oh God. The church of the living God. Father, we ask now, oh God, that we will no longer sit on the front line. We will no longer just sit there on the bench, God. But that we will stand up as mighty warriors and winners in you, oh God. And engage in battle just as you instruct us to do, oh God. Knowing, oh God, walking in faith and confidence. That the battle belongs to you and victory is of the Lord. That you would give us the victory in every single battle that we fight. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now, oh God. We thank you that we are more than conquerors through him 
who loves us, oh God. We thank you for this word on this evening, God. We thank you for the revelation and the confirmation that you have given us on this evening, oh God. We thank you for everything that you have spoken, everything that you have revealed, for what you have ministered to our hearts this evening, oh God, for the things that you have given us to hold on to, Father. We thank you for your precepts and your statutes. We thank you for your word, oh God. You said that your word shall not return void, but accomplish everything that you send it forth to do. And Father, we decree that the mission today has been accomplished because of your word. And so, Father, we praise your name. We lift you up, God. We magnify you, oh God. Father, bless your people on today. Hallelujah. Help them to stand firmly. Help them to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord so that they will know that their labor in you is not in vain. Hallelujah. Continue to increase them in the faith. Continue to stir up their gift, oh God, that's on the inside of them. Continue to give them strength, oh God. Help them to stand on high feet, Heavenly Father, and help them to do what you've called them to do. Continue, God, to show yourself strong and mighty on our behalf. You are the Lord of hosts. You, God, you are the king of glory. You are the ruler of this world, oh God, in all creation, Father. We thank you that our power and our dominion, oh God, and authority belongs to you. Thank you for fighting for us, God. Thank you, Jesus, for making intercessions for the saints every single day. Thank you for the finished work of the cross. Father, we thank you right now. We decree everything that you have declared this day and every day, God, through your word. Thank you for the victory that you have given us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to definitely post this recording on my Facebook page. It will also be on my YouTube channel under um, Grace and Truth Ministries. Um, I will um, also... I think that's all the places I posted. <laughs> but it will be definitely posted on my Facebook page. You can go back and watch it. Feel free to share it with your friends. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's easier to share these videos because not everyone has Facebook. But from YouTube, you can, you can email it. You can text it. You can do all of those things if you want to share this message with others. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Thank you for um, encouraging me in the Lord because it is so much needed I love each and every one of you. God bless you, Monica. I love you. Thank you for your continuous support for joining me. Um, I see, I believe it's Clover Taylor Johnston. God bless you, my sister. Thank you for joining me. God bless you, Pastor Ruby. Thank you so much for joining me. Always praying for my family and myself. We really love you. We greatly appreciate you. Um, I think I saw Celia. Um, all of you, if I missed anybody, I deeply apologize. But, uh, oh, my God, Monica says she is a soldier in the army of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about, Monica. Yes. <laughs> we are warriors and we are winners. Hallelujah. And we will never lose a battle through Christ Jesus. So thank you. I pray that you all enjoy your evening, your holiday weekend. Let us continue to pray one for another. Amen. So God bless you. Have a good evening. And thank you again for joining me this evening in the word of God and worship. God bless you, Kiana. Thank you for joining me. Pastor Selena, hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for your support and always encouraging me in the Lord. So you guys have a great evening and I will see you again soon. God bless you.